Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to this Anarchy Analysis matchup of the week. We are casting the game between the Seraphine Simps and Jack Salicious's. Without further ado, let's get into this pick and bans. Starting with the Seraphine Simps first ban, what will it be? It's gonna be that Pantheon, removing that big powerful pick that can obviously roam and affect the map. Now this is huge as it's so powerful at just throwing them spears as well as being a very strong support. Second band coming in through for the Seraphine Simps is the Akali, not allowing that big powerful pick to come through who can just realistically just throw so much damage down with them 9 point strikes. Last band coming in is that Warwick. That's actually a surprise. He's not seen too often in the pick band stages, so him being banned here is actually quite huge. And the first pick coming in is going to be possibly a Seraphine being hovered by Izzle 33 there. Going to be switching over to teleport, and there you go. KDA all out Seraphine has been locked in, and we are going to be ready and raring to go for this game of the series. And see the band spell out web. Seraphine's locked in and looking at the two team comps right now. I actually feel that the Jaxalicious Giants have the higher amount of scaling. You've got Kale, very late game heavy once you get to the level 16. She's just a monster. Vyga with his infinite scaling in AP, always good. Jax, very strong duelist in the early and to late game. Tarek also going to provide a lot of help, and realistically, they do have two champions that provide invulnerability to their lineup. As for the Seraphine Simps, they've got some very big bulky dudes. Alistar, great for engage, something that you would realistically say is kind of lacking on the Jaxalicious squad. And the Wukong also providing a lot of hard engage. Nasus just provides the damage as we load up into game number one of this best of five. Now, teams are rolling out, standard rollouts, and we get to see the lane positions for each team. Seraphine and Vyga going mid for their respective teams. Wukong and Nasus and Jackson Garen in the bot lane. Nidalee Alistar and Kale and uh, Tarek in the top lane. So a fairly even matchup as we get to watch Izzle 33 dancing in the mid lane. Uh, item wise starts, we've got two relic shields, on e one on either side, or steel reserve, whatever it's called. Yeah, we've got two supports. This is realistically very strong. I actually favor the start for the Seraphine Simps here, is they've got two supports. No one's jungling in this matchup, sadly. But you have to realize that Nidalee is going to be spell thieving. She's going to be looking to get as much damage down as possible. And getting herself to go by hitting the enemies. What's more, she's actually partnered with the Alistar who has the Relic Shield. That's kind of a bummer. You realistically would like the Wukong probably in the top lane. And... Alistar in the bot lane, so that you've at least got two supports gaining gold. Because right now, you need the Alistar farming, and that's going to be it. As we go to the top side, the Seraphine Sims are getting stuck in the minions' as bot side. Counter is going to be propped early, and Wukong is taking a lot of damage. Nasus is not going to be involved as Pressing Out is going to land his boat back to the top side. Nearly getting behind the Tarek is forced to run away, but that Pressing Attack is doing work for Kale. Could have flashed there and got a kill, but she does not. As we go back to the boss side, Counter Strike's going to be popped, and that's Wukong stunned up and put in place. That magic shield will not protect him, and that's first blood to Jaxalicious Giants. Top side, Nidalee. Bice is able to get back to base as Alistar buys enough time. That's the three strikes of Pressy Attack landing onto him, but he's able to walk away back to his turret mid lane. Careful train between two laners. It's a lane that's got a lot of CS as Nasus fails to pick up that minion as we pan between two lanes. This is almost like a Korean 
uh, cast, not Korean casters, this is like Korean observers, because let's be honest, the LEC observers are the best ones in the world, as we go back to the mid lane, that's Vygar caught in the middle of his damage, he's going very low, and Seraphine is going to be able to pick that one up, getting the first blood for the Seraphine simps, and topside, trading coming back, Nidalee's been caught out, that turret's going to land that dazzle, as bot side, Wukong yet again taking a lot of damage. Counter Strike this time will not send him out of his place. But Wukong's diving back in. He's taking a lot of damage. Garen's firing in them sword strikes. As Nasus forces the Jacks away. Top side, Alistar could possibly look for the knock up here as Kale walked up directly into him as bot side yet again. Garen and Nasus doing a lot of work as the top laners go back to bases. And that is a big minion wave that the Seraphine simps need to deal with up there. That's going to cause a lot of issue. Looking at the items right now, as we get a little bit of a pause in the action. Gotta say, Seraphine's doing a lot of work as Garen going to be procced the grass proc by Nasus there. So he's going to be able to keep himself healthy in that trade. Nasus needs to be obviously getting up them stacks of his Q to do more damage late game as that lovely beat drop from Seraphine. Gets a perfect snare as bot side. Just grass procs being procced over and over by Nasasu. Slows down the Garen, forcing him back under his turret. And yeah, there we go. Fairly even trading as we go back to the top side. Alistar gonna land the knockup from the pulverized spears. Also gonna land onto Tarek. He's put a lot of damage down. He's headbutted back into the turret. So everything sim probably are gonna get a kill here. But that's the dazzle coming through. Just stopping the pounce forward by Nidalee. Keeping himself alive. But the spear also gets blocked by Kale. Lovely play there by the Jack Delicious Giants. Keeping themselves in this game as another headbutt lands. Bot side, the Seraphine Simps blue minions piling up. Looking to press into that tower as top side. Jax is going to be knocked up into the air. Could have been headbutted away. He's going to survive thanks to that KLW. And there we go, fighting over and done with, turret damage being delivered, and a bit of, well, gold into that Nidalee Spell Thief, uh, not a Spell Thief, it's whatever it's called, the Summoner item, I forget what it's called, anyway, mid side, Seraphine doing Seraphine things, she's farming up very nicely, got a very big 21 CS advantage, there's bot side, Wukong's diving back in, gonna be hit and stunned by the counter strike, that's gonna be two man stun as well. Wukong taking a ton of damage, walking back into damage. He's being spun to one on by the Garen, who's gonna pick up the first blood of this fight. And Nasus, will he fall to the Jax? Jax has empowered his W, he's gonna slow him down, and Nasus makes it back to his turret. Nicely done there, by Jax Delicious Giants to get themselves a kill and keep themselves alive in this game. Leading 2-1 to one in kills, that's still not going to be enough to have a gold lead as you have to look at the bot in the mid lane as the Seraphine is of 33 just is building up a CS advantage and that's keeping the Seraphine simps in a favorable position I would say as topside these spears are landing perfectly. Nidalee's just throwing them in and getting the damage down. And Kale's not going to be able to do anything. As Tarot's just walking back in, he might go full in. But the Dazzle just means that he's going to be able to walk back to his turret. And the Seraphine Simps don't get anything but a bit of pressure down his mid lane. Seraphine getting turret damage down. That's huge. She's leading... In items, as Vygar has only got the Doran's Ring in the boots. And that's big. As bot side, Counter Strike is going to land yet again. Jax is looking to do some damage here, but he's taking very low. Could fall here, but as Nasus tries to chase him down, but he is unable to get the kill as it's back to trading between Garen and Nasus yet again. Strike after strike, but Nasus is in the red team's minions. Not going to be able to do anything as top side yet again. The Dazzle comes through. That's a pulverized zone into the air. And it's just trading constantly. It's back to the bot side. Nasus is just trying to get as many grass procs as possible off this Garen. Who just keeps giving them to him. But that's the magic shield popped 
by Nasus there on the Garen, meaning he has not got that when Nasus tries to land them strats again. And it's interesting to note this Nasus is going for the AD build. Probably going to build a Phage first with that Ruby Crystal and Long Sword as we pan back down to the bot side. Nasus getting stunned up by the Counter Strike and is leaped on by the Leaping Attack. Gonna look to turn it around as Wukong has arrived. And he was spotted on the ward Jax placed earlier, and it's continual trading, let's just be honest. Fight after fight after fight is coming through as the teams possibly look to reset. That being said, Kale gonna hit level 6, that's a huge power spot up for her. She's able to get them ranged auto attacks, and she's using them to her advantage as Nidalee is unable to do much damage to her. Gonna be healed up there by Tarek as well, the Kale. And that is almost two hits away on that Nidalee. For a kill as bot side yet again the train come through counter strike will land onto nasus who's getting very low but Jax is low as well and the spin to win will it get the win no it will not as we go back to the top side of the map dazzle and the headbutt combo lovely play there by the alistar to knock back the Dazzle. Meanwhile, Seraphine has roamed up top. She's looking to get some work down. She's landing the autos. That's the heal through onto the Alistar. And that's the double beat drop landing. The kill for Izzel 33 there. Is. There goes the Encore. And Tarek wants some more. He's taken very low. Will Izzel 33 pick up the kill here? I don't think so. No, he does. He's he flashes sword. That's the double beat drop. Down dropping that Tarek. And yee We're getting some kills on the board for the Seraphine Simps. 3 to 2 in terms of kills right now. But bot side, Karen was able to get a bit of turret damage down for free. Uncontested work as Nasus was unable to get there in time. Meanwhile, as this is happening, Seraphine soloing out. The Herald with that Moonstone Renewer. Means that she's going to be able to do a lot of work. As bot side, we're seeing trade Wukong is going to be spun to one, but he will not be killed. Nasus pops out ultimate, looking to chase down this Garen who stops in place. Going to get the silence, and Nasus can't do too much here. He is very tanky, but he will not get a kill. Couch Strike's going to be placed by Jax onto him as top side. is going to be taken very low by this Tarot. Going to land the Dazzle onto Nilly as well. It's just disengage after disengage by these two teams. Spear is going to land though for Nidalee. Keeping Tarek interested. Shield going to be also popped by Tarek on himself to keep him self healthy. But yet again, the lanes are being very, very heavily even. As the teams are just trying to get these minions pushed on the turret. Top side. Heavily favors Seraphine Simps. Bot side, I honestly feel favors the Jaxalicious Giants. And mid, well, Seraphine's 3 to 0 to the 0 1 and 0 Vigar. And Vigar's been unable to affect the map. He hasn't gone for any roams like Seraphine, who is just hovering still around that top lane. Possibly looking for a play as bot side. Garen's just running them down. Not going to be able to get the kill though there. And in fact, it may be a possible turnaround as the spin to win comes out from the Garen. He's going to look to drop down the Wukong and there you go. Going to land that silent shot with the sword to drop that Wukong into the ground. Top side. Bit of an interesting one as the Night Harvester is picked up for Nidalee. As mid lane, Yonko is going to come out by the Seraphine. Going to land them B drops into them high key. Boom, boom. Good night, Vigar. Rampage for the Seraphine. And bot side, we clearly missed some trading as Jax has popped his Grand Master Ultimate. But is unable to get any kill as top side. That Night Harvester for nearly doing work. She's putting a lot of damage down to these top laners. Mid lane, Herald is summoned up to crash into that tier 1 turret. And that will result in first blood in terms of the turrets to the Seraphine Simps. And the Herald's going to get the second charge. No one from the Jack's Delicious Giants responded to it. Considering the fact that Vigar died. 
and he's going to be able to clean that one up once he gets back to lane. The Seraphine's just piling in the damage, using them abilities perfectly. She has got them Lucidity Boots as bot side. Nasus is going to drop his, that Garen drops his sword on his head, picking himself up a kill. Going up to 4-0-0, zero zero. this Garen's been uncontested this game. And he's getting very, very fed, like the Seraphine, who has got the Lucidity Boots, who has got a Moonstone Renewer, and possibly on this bag, is going to get the Staff of Flowing Water once she eventually goes back. She was recalling just then, but in fact, she stays in lane. She's probably going to look to get this second turret for the team. And in fact, she does get the second turret for the team, meaning that she gets a bit of a better... Map position, she's able to unlock the rest of her lanes. That's something you want as Kale's gone to join Vigar mid, considering the fact that he's been struggling with the simpiest of the simp, Sizzle 33. Now, bot side. Yet again, Wukong being dropped very low. Gonna be spun to one on, and he's gonna drop. Jax is forced to run away as he goes low as Nessus is running him down, but the science from Garen stops that. And Garen is going to back away. Not going to look to chase onto Nasus, But Nasus, he wants to fight this as his ultimate times out. In fact, we may go back to minion mashing between these bot laners. However, Seraphine has roamed down. She's looking to get some play here. Is going to drop that high note. And that's the double beat drop. Going to go wide, but the charm lands. And that stun does not net a kill for the Seraphine Simps. In fact, Nasus is turret diving. He's looking to continue forward. Gonna walk back though through the turret and land gets four turret shots placed on him for no apparent reason. Meanwhile, mid lane, the Jack's Delicious Giants are looking to make a play. They're gonna go for that mid tier one as Kale and Vigar are uncontested as Seraphine went mid. A uh, bot, that being said, topside. Nidalee is getting a lot of damage down onto this Tarek. He's gonna be forced back to base pretty much soon. And that turret in the top lane is very, very vulnerable. And bot side, Seraphine and Nasus getting turret damage down. And that's going to be the turret falling in the bot lane. Jax is very low as a flash forward. Beat drop lands. And Seraphine goes unstoppable. And Garen is forced back on the run. Wukong chases him down. That's going to be Cyclone popped. He's going to be rooted down by that beat drop. And will we see another kill? No, Garen's too tanky. He's got them five kills in his belt. He does not care for the damage Seraphine bumps out. Even if this is support Seraphine, she's still getting kills. But it's not enough damage to get this Garen. And the possibility of a dive coming through from Seraphine Simps here. As they're positioned very aggressively. B-Drop's going to land onto the Garen. And that's turret aggro placed onto Seraphine right now. She's going to be forced to run away. As the rest of her team takes this tier 2 turret in the bot lane. Jack's looking to use that Grandmaster ultimate to get a kill onto Seraphine. But will not mount to anything. And is forcing to back away. Meanwhile, mid lane, Nidalee's coming down to challenge this Vigar, who's had free run in mid lane. They did get the tier 1 turret, but bot side, yet again, possibility of a fight as the two teams face off. That being said, mid lane, we're going to see a double beat drop land from Seraphine. Them Qs are being dropped heavily onto the head of Vigar. There's the Encore charming him up, and that's a dominant Seraphine kill going over to the Seraphine Sims. Meanwhile, bot side, Nasus has been spun to win on. That's the ultimate coming out from Garen, picking up the first kill of this fight. Executing off that Nasus, and the chase down continues as Wukong steps forward. Counter Strike is popped by Jax. It will not land a kill as Leap Forward from Jax realizes he may be going a bit too far as the minion wave for Seraphine Simps start chipping away at his health bar. And back to the mid lane we go. We've got the. Nidalee and the Alistar roaming in here. Wukong's coming as well, but Garen's there as well, and he's shut down that Nidalee. Possibility of going for another fight as Kale's going to pop that ultimate as she gets headbutted away. That being said, top side, that's Jax taking, uh, Tarek taking a lot of damage. Seraphine is going to force him to pop that ultimate, but that ult means nothing as he does not get to go in, Vun. And mid lane, Vigar picks up a kill with his ultimate Onto the Alistar, who just keeps headbutting everyone away for no apparent reason. Let's be honest. So, let's take an analysis of these two teams in terms of the itemization. 
mythics on the board for only two people in this game. As the Night Harvester for Nidalee and the Moonstone Renewer for Seraphine is on the board. The rest of the team still need to pick up that big boy item. As Alistar finally picks up a Barmy Cinder for himself. What other items are available as topside? Seraphine's just pumping out damage. It's surprising how much damage support Seraphine does, especially considering she's going towards that uh, Chemtech Purifier. Dabby said the Yonko's gonna land. That's gonna be a legendary kill onto the Kale, and she's looking for get more here. The Seraphine's gonna land at a beat drop. Down falls the Tarak, and that's a solo double kill to the Seraphine. How often do you hear me say that in a cast? Not very likely. As midside, Alisar's just forcing back the Garen and the Vigar, headbutting them for sure to make sure they go back all the way. Vigar tried to do a bit cheeky there with his E, but it does not mount to much as Seraphine Simps look to push in this midwave to the inhibitor. Back to the top side map though, we could see a possible death here on Seraphine. One of these two is gonna lose their perfect kill record here. As Seraphine's forced flash away, Garen does not have flash. He has ghost, he does not pop it, and he instead goes back to the minions. He thought that Seraphine, with the extra range, could actually kill him off there and basically make this game pretty much Seraphine simps if he died there. But Seraphine goes back to the base. Is a 33 gonna pick up that chem tank purifier for himself as mid lane Wukong taking low force to pop the clone as Jax comes rushing in two stun targets of the Seraphine Simps. Alistar barely walks away, but Nasus he walks back into trouble. Grandmaster all pop by the Jax. That Counter Strike will not land, but leap forward will, and Jax cannot get in range. He has the ghost, he does not use it, but here comes Seraphine looking to kill the Yonko's gonna land onto three, gonna pick up the first kill of fight onto the Vagon, and that's just a triple baby! Four is of 33, Seraphine, the simps are alive, and they are looking to thrive, as they get themselves three kills to none, and that should be the mid wave crashing into that inhib turret, with no contest from Jack's Delicious Giants. However, Garen and Tarek roaming towards the mid lane here. Seraphine has not backed up, could possibly die. Garen's walking a very weird route. He's walking over towards the bot lane, I tell a lie. Cutting through jungle as Tarek gonna get beat dropped and hit by the cues. The high notes doing so much work for the Seraphine as yet again another double beat drops locks them in place. Just tons of damage coming out from the Seraphine. Gonna possibly look to get the kill onto Jax before the Invan comes through and he does. Bot side, Garen's been caught out but he does not care as the first kill to fight for this bot half is going over to the Kale as she kills off the Nidalee. And could we see an epic horizons land? No we don't. But we do see Garen go bop bop bop. And Nasus is going to pick up a kill onto the Kale, but Garen gets another onto the Alistar. It's a battle between Garen and Seraphine, but Seraphine is not even in this battle. She's pushed up mid, she's going for the inhib, uh, and is now teleporting top in order to get the last tier 2 turret on the map available to the Seraphine simps as Nasus and Tarek. Kind of do a little bit of a jiggy in the mid lane, but Garen's here to ruin everyone's day. Just chipping away at the health bar with his spin to win. Back to the mid lane. Jax has popped his Grandmaster all. It is going to time out. Nasus is taking very low. The magic shield is popped. That will not protect him from Jax. And you are top side. Garen is looking to contest the Seraphine as she is just putting tons of damage down, forcing him back as the tier 2 turret is popped, but look how low Garen's going. He's been taken very, very, very low, but will make it back to his base as Seraphine does not want to die to that turret. She manages to walk away as mid-side. Counter-Strike will not land onto the Jax, but Kale and the Jax doing a lot of work onto Nidalee. Gonna pick up the first kill here. Wukong gonna be shielded up by the Seraphine, but Nasus walks back into danger, and that's Kale hitting level 11. Gonna be getting that empowered auto-attacks. That is very powerful as Seraphine 
continue to run away, just landing the damage down. This is almost a remake of the fight where she won. That's a Kale ult popped off on one side. She's not going to be able to protect the rest of her team. As Seraphine just walking away, she has very low mana here. It's a 33. What can he do? Double beat drop comes through. Could look to turn it. Going to land the autos from the notes of power. But the high notes just doing work. Beat drop used again. Vigar is stuck in the minion wave. He's taken very low. Obviously, the chem tank purifier gives a lot of damage along with that staff of flowing water to the Seraphine. And what's more, she's now finally got a Zonyas. So she can look to go very aggro and then pop that for the invulnerability so that the Jaxalicious Giants are unable to target her. Meanwhile, mid, while that was all going on, the inhibitor fell in favor of the Seraphine Simps. But Jax is coming back to get some revenge as that Counter Strike is going to be able to land a headbutt coming out from the outside. It was a bit too late as the damage comes through. The primordial burst will not kill this Alistar as Vigar is looking to continue the chase. Meanwhile, in the other half of the fight, Nasus pops his own ultimate, looking to pop down a lot of damage, but instead is forced to run away as that is four members of the Jax Alistar. Jax Alistar's giants chasing him down. Seraphine is nowhere near this. She's in the bot lane. So. That was an uneven fight. If you're the Seraphine Simps, you realistically need Seraphine in these fights if you are to basically contest anything on the map. However, we got a fight here in bot lane. Is that the encore hitting onto three? And that's the beat drops coming through. And there's a high note just picking up two kills for Seraphine Simps right now. Garen is next in the eyes of the Simps. He's being taken low to Chemtech Purifier and putting them Grievous Wounds onto him. And flash forward from the Seraphine gets that shut down. And Garen is no more. And you have to really think here that the Simps could look to end the game. They've done enough work here. Seraphine's going to shield up her team. Going to get this tier 3 turret in the bot lane. And that is just a lot of work done here by is all 33 he is definitely the pog player this game he's just done a lot of work a lot of damage and realistically he's made it so that the jaxalicious giant cannot get work done here as she's just firing in these high notes that's the kale ult popped early he was taken very low as alistar looked to get the execute onto him but backing away is the seraphine simps but that's Nasus caught out. He got hit by the Event Horizon as Garen's looking to get some revenge on the people that killed him. And Nidalee is in the eyesight of his gaze. But he is unable to chase forward as Wukong finally walks forward. He's going to walk straight to the Event Horizon. But here is Seraphine. Double beat drop into the legendary Tarek Falls as the fight continues. Wukong is taken though. He's stunned up. Encore lands on to two though. And Seraphine being chased down by the Jags. Meanwhile, Alistar is sacrificed off. Double kill over to Garen. But that's double kill over to the Seraphine. Who's looking to get more damage down. Landing these B drops. Obviously, that Rhylice that she picked up. Is going to make it so that these B drops are guaranteed to stun. If there's an auto attack. If there's a spell already placed. And that's another kill over to Izzel33. Sitting very healthily at 15 kills to no deaths. What can the Jaxalicious Giants do right now as they're stunned up under their turret? They're going to possibly land the killers. Dazzle comes through. That's the W down from the Vigar. Doesn't do too much damage. Zonius is popped to avoid the spin to win from the Garen. But he's looking to chase her down. Going to use his ultimate and Sayonara to the Seraphine kill spree. She is shut down. But fighting is not over yet as the Event Horizon traps in the Nidalee and the Wukong in the fight. But Nidalee and Nasus are able to walk away and nothing else happens. As the Seraphine Simps are swarming the base of the Jaxalicious Giants. Headbutt coming through and that's a shutdown for the Vigar onto Nilly. He's looking to get very strong. There's another drop down. Does not land. Instead, it's the Kale picking that one up. 
and the chase coming through for the Jaxalicious Giants. All five members running mid. Nasus is going to slow down the Garen. Looks to be a sacrifice play. In fact, it is as the Dazzle also lands onto the Wukong. Will this be the shutdown? It is. Seraphine Sims get aced. And the Jaxalicious Giants look to press out the map. But they need to go back to their base. In fact, Garen has gone as bot lane filled with super minions is crashing into their nexus turrets but the rest of the jaxalicious giants are pushing down mid here is the encore coming out from seraphine she's looking to turn this into a 1v4 she lands a lot of damage down continue to walk forward the beat drops land boom high note gets a double kill and a spear from downtown Lands a third killer to fight over to the Simps. It's a two-man effort. Vigar is forced to run away. The T the flash for Seraphine is up and available. It is though a bit of a big distance. She's not gonna be able to catch up to him. Even if she flashes, but she does try to flash. The beat drop does not land. And that's just the inhibitor going over to the Simps. After a bit of an overextent, I would say, on my own opinion of the Seraphine there. Uh, who just is unable to get the kill. And what do you know? Away we go. Fighting continues. Event Horizon does not land. And Root lands though onto the Vigar. He's taken very low. He has no protective shields. As Grievous Wound placed. And a high note kills. As the killing spree starts again for the Seraphine. As the fighting continues. As Jax is taken low. That counter strike was a bit of a in move my friend. And the kill goes over to Nasus. As Seraphine tops up the health bars of her team. Tarek comes back to the lane as the beat drop lands onto two. The encore comes out and that's another kill over to the Seraphine. She's going to go rampaging through this Jack Slicious giant squad. And that should almost be the game to the Seraphine Simps. And game one of this series is such a big one as this sets the tone for the rest of the series. BM coming out from his 33 as a TP pointlessly is used and there we go the seraphine simps win this series game one i should say in dominant fashion and what a game that was as realistically it came down to two players in the end the seraphine played by his 33 and then the garen on the jaxalicious giant squad personally you have to give a high amount of kudos to the Simps, who allowed the Seraphine to get the shutdown onto the Garen, basically making this matchup heavily favored for the Simps once the gold went into Seraphine's back pocket. She got full build, she got into that devilish state with the Rylai's that you realistically don't want to be going up against. And that ended this game and made it so that we got the next few games of this series, which eventually, as you know, it will finish 3-0 to the Simps, because as you know, I only cast games that happen live. Anyway, if you enjoyed this Dignitas vs 100 Thieves full series breakdown, leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new around here if you want to, and I will see you guys next time, where we are breaking down something. See you guys then.